Prepare to be astounded by the remarkable journey of the Queen, a four-time Academy Award nominee, one-time Oscar winner, and four-time Emmy winner, and with her majestic performances, she's become synonymous with royalty on screen. But did you know that behind her glamorous facade lies a story of humble beginnings? Mirren, once just a middle child among three siblings, started from simple roots. Her path to fame was filled with ups and downs, shaping her into the iconic figure she is today. Join us as we unravel the fascinating story of Helen Mirren's captivating career. Helen Mirren Born as Helen Lydia Mironoff on July 26, 1945, entered the world at Queen Charlotte's and Chelsea Hospital in London. Her lineage is a fascinating blend of English working-class heritage and Russian nobility. Her mother, Kathleen Matilda, originated from a humble background in West Ham, being one of 14 children born to a butcher whose ancestry included serving as the butcher to Queen Victoria herself. On the other hand, Helen's father, Vasily Petrovich Mironov, hailed from a distinguished Russian lineage. His father, Pyotr Vasilyevich Mironov, brought the family to England when Vasily was just two years old. Pyotr belonged to the Russian aristocracy with Helen's great-grandmother, Countess Lydia Andreevna Kamenskaya, tracing her roots to esteemed lineage. Descending from Count Mikhail Fedotovich Kamensky, a notable Russian general during the Napoleonic Wars. Pyotr's journey took him from being a colonel in the Imperial Russian Army to working as a diplomat. However, the upheaval of the Russian Revolution in 1917 compelled him and his family to remain in England, where he took up the humble profession of a London cab driver to sustain his loved ones. This rich tapestry of heritage spanning from the bustling streets of West Ham to the opulent estates of pre-revolutionary Russia laid the foundation for Helen Mirren's remarkable journey in life. Helen Mirren's father, Vasily Mironov, led a multifaceted life that traversed various roles and experiences. Prior to the outbreak of World War II, he found himself immersed in the world of music, playing the viola as a member of the prestigious London Philharmonic Orchestra. However, the war brought about significant shifts in his trajectory. Vasily served his country as an ambulance driver, stationed in the East End of London during the relentless bombardment of the Blitz. In 1938, he exchanged vows with Kathleen Rogers in Hammersmith, marking the beginning of a shared journey. Sometime before 1951, he opted to anglicize his first name, becoming known as Basil. This decision reflected the evolving landscape of his life as he navigated through different circumstances and cultural contexts. Following Helen's birth, Vasily transitioned from the realm of music to more pragmatic endeavors, returning to the familiar realm of cab driving to provide for his growing family. Subsequently, he found employment as a driving test examiner, showcasing his adaptability and willingness to embrace new challenges. Later, a career shift led him to the civil service, where he became associated with the Ministry of Transport, contributing to the infrastructure and functioning of the nation. In 1951, a pivotal moment arrived when Vasily made the decision to alter the family surname to Mirren through a legal process known as Deed Pole. This modification symbolized a fresh chapter for the family, perhaps reflecting a desire for a renewed identity or a sense of alignment with their evolving circumstances. Helen's childhood unfolded in Lage on Sea, Essex where she shared the joys and tribulations of growing up with her older sister, Catherine, and younger brother, Peter Basil. Their upbringing was characterized by a notable anti-monarchist sentiment, shaping their perspectives on authority and societal structures. The familial landscape also bore connections to the wider world of glamour and intrigue, as evidenced by Helen's paternal cousin, Tanya Mallet, who gained recognition as a model and even graced the silver screen as a Bond girl. 
Mirren's educational journey began at Hamlet Court Primary School in Westcliff-on-Sea, where her talent for performance first emerged as she took on the lead role in a school production of Hansel and Gretel. Continuing her schooling at St. Bernard's High School for Girls in Southend-on-Sea, she continued to hone her acting skills by participating in various school productions. Following her secondary education, Mirren pursued further studies at the new College of Speech and Drama in London. Notably, this institution was housed within Ivy House, once the residence of the legendary ballerina Anna Pavlova, adding a touch of artistic history to Mirren's academic pursuits. Helen Mirren's passion for the dramatic arts was undeniable, even though her parents disapproved. From a young age of 13, she was captivated by the world of theater, especially Shakespeare and plays. It was Joan of Arc, depicted as the wicked witch in Shakespeare's Henry VI, that first caught her attention. Despite her parents' wishes for her to become a teacher, Helen couldn't resist her calling to the stage. When she shared her love for theater with them, they were less than enthusiastic, but nothing could deter Helen from pursuing her dreams in the world of acting. At the age of 18, Mirren's path took a significant turn when she successfully auditioned for the National Youth Theater. Two years later, she secured the pivotal role of Cleopatra in the NYT production of Antony and Cleopatra at the renowned Old Vic Theater. This role proved to be transformative, catapulting her career into the spotlight and ultimately leading to her signing with Agent Al Parker. Mirren's stellar performances with the National Youth Theatre caught the attention of the prestigious Royal Shakespeare Company, RSC, marking a significant milestone in her burgeoning career. Joining the RSC opened up a wealth of opportunities for Mirren to showcase her talent on esteemed stages. During her tenure with the RSC, Mirren took on a variety of memorable roles. She portrayed characters such as Castisa in Trevor Nunn's 1966 rendition of The Revenger's Tragedy, Diana in All's Well That Ends Well in 1967, and Cressida in Troilus and Cressida in 1968. Her versatility was further demonstrated as she embodied Rosalind in As You Like It, 1968, Julia in The Two Gentlemen of Verona, 1970, Tatiana in Gorky's Enemies at The Old Witch in 1971, and even took on the title role in Miss Julie at The Other Place in the same year. Mirren's dedication to her craft extended beyond the RSC stage, as she also showcased her talents in productions directed by Bram Murray for Century Theatre at the University Theatre in Manchester. Over a span of three years, from 1965 to 1967, she left an indelible mark on audiences with her compelling performances in four distinct productions. Despite her burgeoning success in both film and theatre, Helen Mirren grappled with a significant inner struggle throughout her life. She openly shared her ongoing battle with insecurities, revealing that self-doubt was a constant presence for her. In an interview with Women and Home magazine, she confessed that she still wrestles with these feelings daily. Surprisingly, even during her early years of success, she found herself overwhelmed by anxiety, to the point where she would retreat to the bathroom at parties to gather her thoughts before facing social interactions. In her early 20s, Helen found herself in the midst of a battle with depression. Seeking guidance, she visited a fortune teller in an unfamiliar neighborhood. The fortune teller, after reading her palm, predicted that she would achieve big success in her 40s. This prophecy served as a glimmer of hope during a challenging period in her life. Over time, she learned to better manage her anxiety and self-doubt. She credits her improved coping mechanisms to a shift in perspective, reminding herself that she is just a part of the larger universe, not its center, recognizing that everyone faces their own struggles has also helped her navigate her own challenges with greater resilience. In 1970, filmmaker John Goldschmidt directed and produced a documentary titled Doing Her Own Thing, 
spotlighting Mirren's journey with the Royal Shakespeare Company. Commissioned by ATV, the documentary aired on the ITV network in the UK, offering audiences a glimpse into Mirren's life and career at that pivotal moment. Following this exposure, Mirren embarked on a remarkable collaboration with Peter Brook's International Centre for Theatre Research in 1972 and 1973. Together, they embarked on a tour across North Africa and the United States, during which they crafted the acclaimed production, The Conference of the Birds. After this international venture, Mirren returned to the Royal Shakespeare Company, where she took on the iconic role of Lady Macbeth. Her portrayal captivated audiences both at Stratford in 1974 and later at the Oldwich Theatre in 1975 further solidifying her reputation as a powerhouse performer within the theatrical realm. Sally Bowman, in her 1982 History of the RSC, recounted an incident involving Mirren during her performance in Nun's Macbeth, 1974. According to Bowman, Mirren expressed strong criticism towards both the National Theatre and the RSC for their excessive spending on productions in a letter to the Guardian newspaper. Mirren argued that such lavish expenditure was unnecessary and detrimental to the essence of theatre, lamenting that the pursuit of technical perfection often overshadowed the core elements of truth, emotion and imagination in acting. Mirren's remarks sparked a significant debate within the theatre community and even prompted a question in Parliament. Despite the controversy stirred by her critique, there were no apparent consequences for her outspokenness against the RSC. In September 1975, Helen Mirren graced the stage of the Royal Court Theatre in London's West End, portraying the character of Maggie, a rock star, in David Hare's musical play, Teeth and Smiles. Her portrayal captivated audiences, earning her accolades for her dynamic performance. The following year, Mirren revisited the role of Maggie in a revival of the play at Wyndham's Theatre in May 1976, further solidifying her reputation as a versatile and talented actress. Mirren's theatrical journey continued to flourish as she delved into a diverse range of roles. Beginning in November 1975, she showcased her versatility with the Lyric Theatre Company in the West End, embodying characters such as Nina in The Seagull and Ella in Ben Travis's new farce, The Bed Before Yesterday. Critics praised her performance, with Michael Billington of The Guardian describing her portrayal of Ella as stirringly voluptuous in the Harlow-esque Good Time Girl role. In 1977, Mirren returned to the Royal Shakespeare Company, RSC, in Stratford-upon-Avon, delivering a commanding performance as the steely Queen Margaret in Terry Hand's production of The Three Parts of Henry VI. Her portrayal captured the essence of power and determination, earning her further acclaim from audiences and critics alike. The following year, Mirren reprised her role as Queen Margaret at the Aldwych Theatre, showcasing her ability to command the stage with grace and authority. In 1979, Mirren continued to dazzle audiences with her talent, earning praise and admiration for her portrayal of Isabella in Peter Gill's production of Measure for Measure at Riverside Studios. Her performance was hailed as bursting with grace further cementing her status as one of the most accomplished actresses of her generation. In 1981, Helen Mirren made a triumphant return to the Royal Court for the London premiere of Brian Friel's Faith Healer. Her portrayal garnered critical acclaim, showcasing her ability to immerse herself fully in complex characters. Simultaneously, Mirren dazzled audiences with her performance in the title role of John Webster's The Duchess of Malfi, presented by Manchester's Royal Exchange Theatre. The production later transferred to the Roundhouse in Chalk Farm, London, where Mirren's depiction of the Duchess captivated both critics and theatre-goers. Francis King of the Sunday Telegraph lauded Mirren's performance, noting that she effortlessly embodied the essence of the character, ensuring her presence was felt even in her absence. 
In January 1983, Mirren took on the role of Moll Cutpurse in The Roaring Girl at the Royal Shakespeare Theatre, followed by a performance at the Barbican Theatre in April 1983. Critics praised Mirren's portrayal, with Michael Coveney of the Financial Times commending her ability to infuse the character with a radiant singularity of purpose, bringing depth and nuance to the role that elevated the production to new heights. In early 1989, Helen Mirren took to the stage alongside Bob Peck at the Young Vic in London for the premiere of Arthur Miller's double bill, Two-Way Mirror. Their performances garnered praise, prompting Miller himself to comment on the fearlessness of English actors in expressing intense emotions. He noted their inclination towards open communication with the audience, highlighting the unique dynamic present in London theatres. In Elegy for a Lady, Mirren portrayed the elegant proprietress of a sophisticated boutique while in some kind of love story, she embodied the role of a blonde prostitute with a captivating blend of vulnerability and sexual allure, reminiscent of the iconic Marilyn Monroe. In 1994, Helen Mirren achieved another significant breakthrough on stage in a Yvonne Arno theatre production of Ivan Turgenev's A Month in the Country, destined for the West End. Directed by Bill Bryden, Mirren took on the role of Natalia Petrovna. Alongside John Hurt as her aimless lover Rakitin and Joseph Fiennes, in only his second professional stage appearance as the confident young tutor Belyaev. Before 2015, Mirren received two nominations for Broadway's Tony Award for Best Actress in a Play. The first came in 1995 for her Broadway debut in A Month in the Country, where her performance as Natalia Petrovna garnered critical acclaim. Her second nomination occurred in 2002 for The Dance of Death, where she starred alongside Sir Ian McKellen. Interestingly, their intense rehearsal period coincided with the tragic events of the terrorist attacks on New York on September 11, 2001, adding a poignant layer of context to their collaboration. In 1998, Helen Mirren took on the iconic role of Cleopatra opposite Alan Rickman's Antony in Antony and Cleopatra at the National Theatre. However, the production faced criticism, with The Guardian describing it as a plodding spectacle rarely informed by powerful passion, and The Daily Telegraph noting the absence of crucial sexual chemistry essential for a successful production. In 2000, Nicholas Hitner, who had previously collaborated with Mirren on the film adaptation of The Madness of King George, cast her as Lady Torrance in his revival of Tennessee Williams' Orpheus, descending at the Donmar Warehouse in London. Mirren's performance received acclaim, with Michael Billington of The Guardian praising it as an exemplary study of an immigrant woman who has acquired a patina of resilient toughness but who slowly acknowledges her sensuality. In November 2003, Helen Mirren once again captivated audiences at the National Theatre with her portrayal of Christine Manon in a revival of Eugene O'Neill's Morning Becomes Electra, directed by Howard Davies. Critics praised Mirren's performance, describing her as defiantly cool, camp and skittish evening standard and noting that she glows with mature sexual allure, Daily Telegraph. Reflecting on her experience in the production, Mirren expressed that it was one of the best of her professional life. Despite the play's lengthy duration of four and a half hours, Mirren remarked on the overwhelming response from the audience, attributing its success to the exceptional casting, design and direction. In 2009, Mirren took on the title role in Jean Racine's Phaedre at the National Theatre, directed by Nicholas Heitner. The production received acclaim and was even staged at the historic Epidaurus Amphitheatre on July 11 and 12, 2009, further solidifying Mirren's reputation as a formidable talent on the stage. In 2007, Helen Mirren spoke out about an unsettling experience during a casting call in 1964, alleging that director Michael Winner had treated her like a piece of meat. In response, 
Winner stated to The Guardian that he did not recall asking her to turn around, but suggested it might have been at the request of the casting agent. He emphasized his respect for Mirren as a person and actor, despite any misinterpretation of the incident. Mirren continued to excel in her film career, delivering memorable performances in movies such as Gosford Park, 2001, alongside Maggie Smith and Calendar Girls, 2003, with Julie Walters. Her more recent appearances included roles in The Clearing, 2004, Pride, 2004, Raising Helen, 2004, and Shadow Boxer, 2005. Additionally, Mirren lent her voice to the supercomputer Deep Thought in the film adaptation of Douglas Adams's The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, 2005. On June 7, 2015, Helen Mirren secured the Tony Award for Best Actress in a play for her remarkable portrayal of Queen Elizabeth II in the audience. This acclaimed performance not only earned her the prestigious Laurence Olivier Award for Best Actress, but also marked her achievement of the US Triple Crown of Acting. Mirren joined the esteemed company of celebrated performers such as Ingrid Bergman, Dame Maggie Smith and Al Pacino in attaining this prestigious accolade. Throughout her illustrious career, Mirren has portrayed three British queens in various films and television series. Elizabeth I in the television series, Elizabeth I in 2005, Elizabeth II in The Queen, 2006, and Charlotte in The Madness of King George, 1994. Notably, she's the only actor to have depicted both Queens Elizabeth on screen. Mirren's portrayal of Queen Elizabeth II in The Queen earned her numerous prestigious awards, including a BAFTA, a Golden Globe, and an Academy Award. During her acceptance speech at the Oscars, she paid tribute to Elizabeth II, acknowledging her grace and resilience throughout her reign. Mirren continued to impress audiences with supporting roles in National Treasure, Book of Secrets, Inkheart, State of Play, and The Last Station, earning her yet another Oscar nomination. In 2010, Helen Mirren graced the silver screen in an impressive five films. In Love Ranch, directed by her husband, Taylor Hackford, she took on the role of Sally Confort, one half of a married couple who established the first legal brothel in the United States, the Mustang Ranch in Story County, Nevada. Mirren also showcased her versatility by starring as Prospera, the Duchess of Milan, in Julie Taymor's adaptation of Shakespeare's The Tempest. In a bold move, Taymor changed the original character's gender to cast Mirren as the lead. While Mirren received praise for her performance, the film itself faced criticism from reviewers. In Rowan Joffe's Brighton Rock, a crime film inspired by Graham Greene's 1938 novel, Helen Mirren portrayed a determined tea shop owner. Her character fights to rescue one of her young employees from marrying a teenage killer. Premiering at the Toronto International Film Festival in September 2010, the film received mixed reviews. However, Mirren found both critical and commercial success in Robert Schwenke's ensemble action comedy, Red. Based on Warren Ellis's graphic novel, Mirren played Victoria, an ex-MI6 assassin. Despite initial hesitations about the film's graphic violence, Mirren was swayed by Bruce Willis's involvement. Released to positive reviews, Red grossed an impressive $186 million worldwide. In addition to her live-action roles, Mirren lent her voice to Zack Snyder's computer-animated fantasy film Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul, where she voiced the antagonist Naira. The film proved to be a financial success, grossing $141 million worldwide. However, Mirren's next film, the comedy Arthur, a remake of the 1981 classic, received negative reviews from critics who deemed it an unnecessary remake. Undeterred, Mirren dove into her role as a retired Israeli Mossad agent in the debt. Reportedly, she immersed herself in Hebrew language studies, Jewish history, and Holocaust writing 
including The Life of Simon Wiesenthal. The Debt, a remake of the 2007 Israeli film of the same name, showcased Mirren's dedication to her craft. In 2012, Helen Mirren took on the role of Alma Reville, Alfred Hitchcock's wife, in the biographical film Hitchcock. Directed by Sasha Gavasi and based on Stephen Rebello's book Alfred Hitchcock and the Making of Psycho, the film delves into the couple's relationship during the production of Psycho, a groundbreaking horror film that left an indelible mark on Hitchcock's career. While Hitchcock achieved moderate success in art house circles, it received mixed reviews from critics who cited tonal inconsistency and a lack of insightful retrospection. Despite the film's shortcomings, Mirren's portrayal of Alma Reville received universal acclaim. Roger Ebert praised her performance as the cornerstone of the film, describing it as warm and effective. In addition to Hitchcock, Mirren starred in The Door, a gripping drama directed by Istvan Zabo. Adapted from the Hungarian novel of the same name, the film is set in 1960s Hungary during communist rule. Mirren portrayed a mysterious housekeeper whose influence over her employer, played by Martina Gedek, becomes increasingly oppressive. Mirren described the role as difficult to play, marking it as one of the most challenging endeavors of her career. In the following year, Helen Mirren stepped into the shoes of Bette Midler in David Mamet's biographical television film, Phil Spector, centered around the famed American musician. The HBO production delves into the complex relationship between Spectre and his defense attorney, Linda Kenny Baden, portrayed by Mirren during his first murder trial for the death of Lana Clarkson in 2003. While Phil Spector received mixed to positive reviews from critics, Mirren's performance, alongside co-star Al Pacino, garnered significant praise. The film earned 11 Primetime Emmy Award nominations and clinched Mirren a Screen Actors Guild Award at the 20th Award Ceremony. However, it faced criticism from Clarkson's family and friends who believed the suicide defense was given undue prominence and from Spectre's wife, who felt Spectre was portrayed unfavorably. In the same year, Mirren lent her voice to the character of Dean Abigail Hardscrabble in Pixar's animated comedy film, Monsters University, a commercial hit grossing $743 million worldwide. She also reprised her role in the action comedy sequel, Red 2, which, despite mixed reviews, proved to be another box office success, raking in over $140 million globally. Mirren's sole film of 2014 was the comedy drama The Hundred Foot Journey, opposite Indian actor Om Puri. Directed by Lasse Hallström and produced by Steven Spielberg and Oprah Winfrey, the film revolves around a feud between neighboring restaurants in a French town. Mirren received widespread acclaim for her portrayal of a snobbish restaurateur, a role she embraced as an opportunity to play a French character. The film earned her another Golden Globe nomination and enjoyed moderate commercial success, grossing $88 million worldwide. In 2015, Helen Mirren collaborated once again with her former assistant Simon Curtis on the film Woman in Gold, co-starring Ryan Reynolds. Inspired by the true story of Jewish refugee Maria Altman, the film follows her legal battle alongside lawyer Randy Schoenberg to reclaim Gustav Klimt's iconic painting, Portrait of Adele Bloch-Bauer from the Austrian government. While the film received mixed reviews, Mirren and Reynolds' performances were widely praised, contributing to its success as one of the highest grossing specialty films of the year. That same year, Mirren also starred in Gavin Hood's thriller Eye in the Sky, portraying a military intelligence officer leading a covert drone mission in Nairobi, Kenya. Her final film of 2015 was Jay Roach's biographical drama Trumbo, where she portrayed the renowned actor and gossip columnist Hedda Hopper. 
The film received positive reviews from critics and earned Mirren her 14th Golden Globe nomination. Moving to 2016, Mirren's sole film was Collateral Beauty, directed by David Frankel. In this ensemble drama, she starred alongside Will Smith, Kira Knightley, and Kate Winslet, portraying a woman coping with grief. Despite a talented cast, the film faced criticism from critics. In 2017, Mirren lent her voice to the documentary film, Cries from Syria, focusing on the Syrian civil war. Additionally, she made an uncredited cameo appearance in The Fate of the Furious, playing Magdalene, the mother of Owen and Deckard Shaw. Mirren had a more significant role in The Leisure Seeker, portraying one half of a terminally ill couple embarking on a final cross-country adventure. In 2018, Mirren took on the role of Sarah Winchester in the supernatural horror film Winchester, followed by portraying Mother Ginger in Disney's adaptation of The Nutcracker and The Four Realms. Continuing her prolific career, Mirren appeared in several films in 2019, including Berlin, I Love You, Anna, and the Fast and Furious spin-off Hobbs and Shaw. More recently, in 2021, she was cast as the villain Hespera in the superhero film Shazam! Fury of the Gods. In her latest roles, Mirren showcased her versatility, portraying Golda Meir in the biopic Golda and making an appearance in Kendrick Lamar's music video for Count Me Out in 2022. In regards to her romantic life, Helen Mirren's early years were marked by a relationship with Northern Irish actor Liam Neeson during the early 1980s. Their connection flourished while they worked together on the film Excalibur, 1981. Neeson later acknowledged Mirren's pivotal role in helping him secure representation during an interview on Inside the Actors Studio with James Lipton. Following her relationship with Neeson, Mirren found love with American director Taylor Hackford in 1986. The couple eventually tied the knot on December 31st, 1997, coinciding with Hackford's 53rd birthday. Their wedding took place at the Ardesier Parish Church in the picturesque Scottish Highlands. The two initially crossed paths on the set of White Nights in 1985. Notably, this marked Mirren's first marriage, while Hackford had been married twice before, with two children from his previous marriages. Despite their union, Mirren openly confessed to lacking any maternal instincts and did not have children of her own. In 2003, Helen Mirren had received a special honor from the Queen, becoming a Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire for her contributions to drama. She was officially recognized during an investiture ceremony held at Buckingham Palace in December of that year. In January 2009, Mirren was recognized as one of the top 10 British actresses of all time by The Times. She was listed alongside renowned names such as Julie Andrews, Helena Bonham Carter, Judi Dench, and Audrey Hepburn. In March 2024, on the occasion of the 65th anniversary of International Women's Day, Helen Mirren was among several female celebrities whose likeness was transformed into Barbie dolls as a tribute to their achievements. At 78 years old, Helen Mirren has undoubtedly carved out one of the most remarkable careers in film history, cementing her status as one of the all-time greatest. Thank you for tuning in. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content. If you found this video interesting, you'll definitely enjoy the one showing on your screen now. Click it and I'll catch you in the next one.